Hi, this is Keith Deason, and today we're going to build an electric guitar out of scraps and plywood. So I used a bunch of reclaimed scraps of plywood, some cabinet doors, and some old workbench tops that were about the equivalent of yeah, three quarters of a sheet of plywood for this build. This guitar is going to be what's called a through neck design. That means instead of a truss rod keeping the neck stable on the inside, it's just going to have a neck piece that goes all the way down through the body. So I cut these long thin strips on a table saw and I'm going to laminate them together to achieve that goal. Now that they're nice and bonded together, I'm going to move this whole thing over to the table saw to do the basic shaping of the neck. I start by taking a crosscut section out of the area where the neck will meet the body. I'm hogging out a whole bunch of the wood here because when I run the table saw vertically through the piece, I don't want it to leave a weird round chunk at the end, so this will keep that from happening. Well, it should have kept it from happening. That's not so bad, I'll get that off of the chisel later. I use the same method for where the neck is gonna start tapering down to the headstock. I remove a bunch of the material with a cross cut. And then I cut through with the saw. You're gonna have to take my word for it though because I left the fence in the way and didn't get the shot. But there's the final result. Okay, I marked off the angle for the headstock. It's important that the headstock angles backwards. That way it'll pull the strings tight and down across the nut, which is the top piece that holds the strings in a guitar neck. And because my bandsaw is still mid-restoration, I will finish this off with a handsaw. I'm gluing up this little angled piece of wood right where the neck meets the body to make a nice contour for that area for your hand and for aesthetics. So these cabinet doors are actually really high-grade plywood, which is nice because this is going to be the back of the body of the guitar. So I traced the basic shape of a guitar that I already had because, well, I like the shape. It feels good, it looks nice, and it looks like it'll be easy to cut out with the jigsaw. I was right, that was easy. So it's time to lay some glue down because I'm going to be laminating the through piece of the neck to the body, which will hopefully add a whole lot of stability to this design. And I want the headstock to flare out of the neck, so I glue a couple extra pieces on that I'm going to shape out later. For the top face surface of the guitar, I'm using my old bench top, which was actually just a piece of plywood that I used for a few years on top of two sawhorses. The jigsaw didn't leave such a great straight line for a glue up on the edge of this piece, so I affixed it to a right angled piece of wood and ran it through the table saw and got a really nice fit. Cutting out the other half of the face piece through about five years of glue and paint and awesome looking stuff. And it's time to cut the geometric inlay. This whole process is really just two steps repeated over and over again. You tilt your blade to a desired angle, you raise it so it doesn't go all the way through the piece of wood, you make your cut, you move your fence in a desired amount, and repeat over and over. Then you turn the piece around and repeat the process to get these nice little valleys. Now I can't tell you any specific numbers in terms of angles or the distance on the table saw. I experimented with a couple pieces and got to a look that I liked and just went with it. Once you get those nice valleys in your piece of wood, you turn it 90 degrees and repeat the process again. Oops. Just keep in mind that as you do this, your piece will no longer have a flat bottom, so it might have some registration issues on your saw's table. Basically, don't be an idiot and hook it on the edge of your table saw table like I did. Let's speed up some of this process because it is tedious. So I guess this is as good a time as any to say that I'm doing this as part of the Rockler Plywood Challenge for the Modern Maker Podcast. The challenge was to build anything out of a single sheet of plywood, and me, being the uh, hoarder that I am, I chose to reclaim plywood, and chose to make a guitar, because I thought it would be a fun build. I didn't try to make the design go all the way to the edge, because I knew there'd be some fudging with the measurements here and there, and there was, I kind of goofed a little bit in the middle, so I'm just going to cut those parts out, and the good thing about using exact measurements is that it lines up very nicely, even if you have to excise your mistakes. So I chose to inlay this pattern into the pickguard area of the guitar, so I have to cut the faceplate to match and cut the inlay to match the contours of the guitar. 
Originally, I was going to cut a piece of clear acrylic to go over the inline act as a pick guard, but I really like the way it looks as is on the guitar, and if it's a problem, I'll do that. But I don't really see myself cutting my hands or scraping them too much on this piece. And everything fits great, so it's time to laminate it all together. I went back and added a little glue to the sides of these pieces before I clamped them up. I just didn't quite get that on video. And I used my oscillating belt sander to sand the pieces flush with each other because the jigsaw doesn't always cut exactly where you want it to. I also took the opportunity to shape a bit of the taper on the back of the neck and the headstock itself. Next up was the belt sander to flatten up the top and get those edges a little bit cleaner and the orbital to finish everything off and get the contours exactly how I wanted them. I waited until this point to glue up the inlay because I knew I'd be banging this guitar around a lot with the sanding and didn't want to chip off any of these little pyramids. And I lined it up as best I can, sorry if you have OCD, and I used my offcut to protect it from the clamps. Needed to add a taper to the neck and cut out the shape of the headstock, so it's time to get jiggy with it again. I'm sorry, I'll never say that again. Cut a nice piece of walnut for the fingerboard and ran it through the planer to get it to the thickness I needed. So I keep explaining every little piece I'm gluing onto this guitar. I don't know how much you guys know about building guitars. I don't know a lot about it, but, you know, this is the neck board, fingerboard, fretboard, whatever you want to call it. It goes on the neck. So instead of trying to push this whole guitar through a saw, I just took some 80 grit sandpaper on the random orbit and flushed up the fretboard to the neck. Also using it to add the fretboard's radius. Okay, it's time to build our own electric guitar pickup. Now I just want to say I'm going to make another shorter video about exactly what I'm doing here and explain why of it all. So we can really just sit back and talk for a minute while I do this. It's a whole thing. So when I first had the thought to build the electric guitar for this challenge, I thought I'd be using some store-bought pickups. But the maker in me couldn't let that slide. I thought, what better opportunity do I have to learn about making my own pickups? So, I watched a whole bunch of YouTube videos, I learned about all the basics of how pickups work, what exactly they are, and how I could adapt that to the materials that I have at hand. Now most of it was pretty self-explanatory and pretty simple. Winding the copper wire around the pickup, which is an essential step in the process, proved to be quite a pain in the ass. I set up this whole elaborate system with a paint roller and the drill and all this stuff, and I think my wire was just a little too thin, because every time I tried to wind, it would snap. So what you're seeing me make here is the first pickup that I kind of screwed up right about here. The wire got all tangled and it broke, and I had to take a break and reevaluate. I'm going to add that all the copper wire I got came from these wall wart transformer plugs that come with so many pieces of electronics. The second pickup worked a lot better, I potted it with hot glue, I added the magnets, and here we go for a sound test. I'm testing it here with a cigar box guitar that I made in a previous video that I will link because it would be stupid not to. Now to glue the magnets in place so they don't slide around when I'm installing the pickup and go back to the guitar itself. There is a lot involved with building an entire electric guitar from scratch. Now I could have used a pre-made neck or a kit to make this part of the guitar, but you know, if I was going to screw up, I really wanted those mistakes to be my own. And really, I wasn't going to learn anything about guitar making from purchasing half the stuff on Amazon. Also, any experienced guitar makers, you don't have to watch this part. You could probably skip ahead, because I did this process in the way that I could with the tools I had at the time. And I'm sure it's not pretty. I'm sure I'm screwing everything up. By the time I got to like the 20th fret, I was killing it. So as a close-up for the process, I took my combination square, rested it on the previous fret, made a mark, cut into it with this gent saw that has a very tiny kerf, and then opened up the kerf for the fret wire with this coping saw. Then I just slid in the fret wire, bent it to shape, and hammered the edges down with my wooden mallet. 
drilling the holes for the tuning pegs was pretty straightforward. Now, I could have made tuning pegs myself, but I've tried that before and failed miserably five or six times. There's, I, so yeah, just trust me on this one. I bought them. Since I'm only going to have one pickup on this guitar, I thought it best to position it towards the middle instead of having it be a neck pickup or a bridge pickup. So I marked off the spot, routed out the slot, and got to work. Give a little test fit. Not too bad. And before I broke all the way through, I came through to the back and opened up a wider area so that I would have enough space to work. I also routed a channel for the wires to go through from the input and volume knob section that I'm going to carve out in just a minute to the pickup itself. Now this guitar only has one volume knob, one pickup, and the input. I kept it as simple as I could for myself, and I know you're thinking, hey, that's not real, like nobody plays an electric guitar with only one pickup and one volume knob, but you know what, Eddie Van Halen did, and from what I understand, he was pretty good at playing guitar. Speaking of volume knobs, uh, let's make a hole for one here. I was hoping that one of the holes that was already in the workbench top would naturally line up, but uh, I'm not smart enough to pre-plan something like that. So here's a hole next to a hole. Clipping fret wires is not a lot of fun, but it can lead to some fun edits. And you gotta file down the edges. I used this big file to start off and hog off most of the material and went back with a finer file later to clean it up and make it smooth and nice for the fingertips. I had to take this nice flat piece of plywood and sprayed here some fine sandpaper to it to flatten out the top of the frets. You don't want any of them sticking out further than the others and buzzing. I used this old vinyl record to cut out the bezel for the surround for the pickup. I got a nice shape by folding a sanding disc and cutting it out slowly using my Dremel tool with a roto zip bit. The Dremel left a bit of a rough edge so I sanded it and shaped it all nice and it looks great. Time to attach it with some screws, and voila. And I did put a spacer under there so it doesn't bend, I just didn't show that because sometimes you don't want to turn the camera on for a one second process. Okay, let's get the giggles out now. The thing I'm going to install now on my guitar is called the nut. The strings go into the nut. I chopped out a little channel for it, I had a little glue, and now I just have to wait for my nut to dry. You're welcome. I'm not exactly sure what to call the part I'm making here. It's not quite the bridge, because the bridge holds the strings up over the pickups. It's like the string anchor, I guess. Either way, from my cigar box guitar building experience and watching a few guys do that, I know that you can use a hinge to hold the strings in this manner. And me being the hoarder and overachiever that I am, I decided to use this really badass antique hinge to accomplish this. And it's time for a shellac attack. It's the only finish I had lying around and it'll do just fine. I gotta trace out this piece of Luan for the back plate to cover up all the electronics and to keep me from messing things up with my hips and my crotch. And yes, there was a dinosaur on it. I painted that a long time ago and never finished it. So my guitar, besides being awesome on the outside, will be super awesome on the inside. And we're back to shellac and the axe. I made sure to put 5 or 6 coats and sand with 600 grit sandpaper in between each coat with the shellac because the finish needs to be quite durable on this. It's going to be getting a lot of abuse. And I took one of the scrap pieces I had from the inlay tryouts that was a little too big and I'm using it as what's called a floating bridge. It will just be jammed under the strings and held in place by the pressure of tightening them. I cut kerfs and am widening them with this file just to make sure that the strings stay where I want them to. Now to solder up the electronics. Okay. I watched a lot of videos on this and I am pretty sure I got it right. I have the hot lead and the ground coming from the pickup going into the back of the volume pot here, which is a potentiometer switch. You can look that up yourself. After recording, I looked it up again and I ended up running one more ground wire from the potentiometer to a screw holding in the bridge. Apparently that's a good idea. I added a couple screws so I could use a strap. And that's it. Before the moment of truth, I just want to say I love the way this thing turned out. There's a lot of detail and a lot of texture, and it is just the junkiest, funkiest thing. So let's listen to it.
So besides my terrible guitar playing, it sounds great and no one is more surprised than me. If you want more great projects, hit the subscribe button, follow me on Instagram, I post there every day. You can support me on Patreon, there's links in the description for all of that. Thank you, and later makers.